All right, before we finish out with horizontal motion, we just want to look at one more example. This time we're going to do something a little bit more involved. So we've got the driver of a 2200 kilogram car. It's traveling 100 kilometers per hour east. They suddenly notice a moose on the highway and they apply the brakes. So the brakes, they manage to apply a force of 20.0 kilonewtons to the west. We want to determine the distance it's going to take for the car to stop. And we also want a time it's going to take for the car to stop. A lot to dissect in here. Again, before we go on, let's draw the free body diagram. So the free body diagram. Now, in the previous example with the canoe, I should have mentioned I drew the free body diagram from the perspective of looking top down. Just because in that example, I didn't really need to consider the force of gravity or any sort of buoyancy force from the water to do the question. But my bad, I should have included that. For this question here, I'm going to say we're going to look at it from a side view. So here's our car. We're going to call this direction east. We'll call that positive. So my car is traveling east. Now, the car on the road, there's going to be a normal force that supports the car. There's going to be a force of gravity. Now, Fn and Fg, they should have the same length. They're going to be balanced because in the y direction we want a net force of zero because again when you're driving along the highway your car is not going to spontaneously start going up vertically or down into the ground it's going to stay nice and level in that plane we want those balanced the only other force that we have to consider here is the brakes now the brakes apply this force that's going to the west so we're going to put that right here and i'll call that fb now somebody might want to say, well, what about the applied force of the engine? It doesn't mention anything about it. If it doesn't mention it, don't assume it. What's likely happening is once the person lets off the gas, there's not going to be any applied force from the engine. And then we're going to start looking at that force from the brakes. So this is what we have for our free body diagram. Now what we want to look at is we want to look at, again, what we have, how we're going to get that. So in terms of variables, what do we know? Well, we know the mass of the car is 2,200 kilos. We know the initial velocity is 100 kilometers per hour east. We'll call that positive, since we call it east positive. And again, we don't like kilometers per hour. We're going to want to make sure that everything is in meters per second. So if I divide that by 3.6, I'll get about 27.778 meters per second. I'm just keeping some extra significant digits for now. I know the force of the brakes. I know that that is going to be negative 20 kilonewtons because it's going west, but we don't like kilo. So we're going to say that this is negative 2.00 times 10 to the 4 newtons. And then we want to find the distance it's going to take for this thing to stop. We also want the time. So this is actually a kinematics question with a little bit of dynamics involved because we're interested in finding D and T. We know VI. We also know this thing comes to a stop. So we can also say VF is equal to zero. So let's focus on one of the kinematics variables first. Let's focus on finding the distance. So we're going to find D first. So I know VI, D, VF, or sorry, I know VI, I know VF. I want to find D. Now the thing is with all these kinematics questions, we usually need to have three known variables and an unknown. We have our unknown already for D. We need something else that we know. Well, what we can get is we can determine the acceleration. And we can determine the acceleration using the mass and the net force acting on this object. So we're going to determine the net force from Newton's second law. So again, this is going to be a physics principle number one scenario. So we're dealing with accelerated motion. So let's look at our net force statement for a moment. And I'm just looking in the net force in the direction of motion. I don't care vertically. So in the direction of motion, the only net the only force I have acting on that object is the force of the brakes. That's it. So we can say that, well, MA, this is equal to the force of the brakes or the acceleration, this is going to be that negative 2.00 times 10 to the 4 newtons divided by this 2200 kilograms. 
So what that's going to do is that's going to give us the, accel the rate of acceleration of this car. So we're going to get about negative 9.09, well, we'll say about 1 meters per second squared. So based on the information that I have, based on the braking force that's going against the direction of motion and the mass of this car, I know that my acceleration in this case is about negative 9.091 meters per second squared. So knowing that, I need to have an equation that has, both, has VI, D, A, and VF. So the equation that's actually going to help me out for this is going to be VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. Well, the good thing is I know VF, this thing is coming to a stop. So this term is going to be 0. So I'm left with 0 is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. I'm interested in finding the distance, so we got to take this VI squared, put it on the other side first. Because 0 minus VI squared is just going to be negative VI squared. So we get negative VI squared equals 2AD. We're going to divide by this 2a, 2a. So d is going to be this negative vi squared divided by 2a. Now, the mistakes that happen in this, forgetting the square, that's the first one. Not converting to meters per second, that's another one. And then the other thing that you have to watch for in here when you're inputting this in the calculator, you want to make sure because you have more than one term in the denominator, you want to make sure you actually put brackets around this in the calculator. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to take your VI and square it. That number is going to get divided by 2, and then that number is going to get multiplied by this negative 9.091 if you're not careful with your bracketing. So really, really watch for that. So we're going to be really careful with the bracketing when we put this in. And we're going to get something along the lines of about 42.2 meters. So this car, it's going to travel about 42.2 meters before it stops. Now, this is not really realistic because we also didn't take into account the reaction time. Like, first of all, the person's got to see the moose. They have to react and then hit the brakes. So we didn't consider that. So take our answers here with a little bit of a grain of salt. So the last part is we want to find the time. Now, there's a few options here because now that we've unlocked D, we have VI, D, VF, and A. You can use any of the kinematics equations that have those variables listed. For me, I know I already calculated A, so there's already a danger in using A because it's a calculated value. I'm probably going to try and avoid using D to calculate T just because D relies on a previously calculated value itself. So I don't want to use D to find T because then I'm using like a previously calculated value using a previously calculated value to get T. So I'm going to try and avoid that. So what I want is I want an equation that has acceleration, VI, VF, and T. That's what I'm looking for. The equation that's going to come to the rescue on this is the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. Or how it's more useful for us, A equals VF minus VI over T. Again, the VF is going to go away since this thing is coming to a stop. So we know up top, 0 minus VI, we're just going to have this negative VI divided by T. We can multiply both sides by T here. Because again, if you what you want is in the denominator, what you're trying to solve for, you need to bring it up top first. And then you can isolate it. So I have AT equals negative VI. Now that the T is up top, now I can isolate for that. We'll divide both sides by A. So T is going to be this negative VI divided by A. Last thing, let's plug in what we know. So we know we got this 27.778 meters per second, or 100 kilometers per hour in meters per second. And then our acceleration of negative 9.7. 0.091 meters per second squared. So what we're going to get is we're going to get the time for this to stop is about 3.06 seconds. Expect now, 
We did a whole unit on kinematics and now we're in dynamics. That doesn't mean kinematics is going to go bye-bye and we'll never see it again. You're actually going to find that kinematics still plays a central role in physics 20. So make sure you're staying on top of that stuff. It's not going anywhere.